So Steve, could you give us a rundown on the less glamorous parts of setting up for the gathering? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I could actually. Where do you want me to start? Step one. Well, wasn't this floor completely pristine when we walked in here earlier? Uh, yeah, it was. It was absolutely pristine. No, it was covered in uh, bird nest building materials, which we do sweep up regularly, but they keep bringing it in until we've got the windows completely covered. Uh, and of course, birds, as they take flight, get excited, uh, tend to poop a lot, so they poop over everything. So everything's covered in guano, which we're now clearing up, and it will be ready for our clans folk and visitors tonight for our first reception. Uh, yeah, ever, first reception ever uh, in the tower, so for the clan, so another first for clan Hannay. So that gives it lots of pleasure when you're, when you're cleaning up the guano. Yeah, the last pack of herons, and she was always looking around trying to see where oh, she was right. going. She gets over around and How old is she? Five. Five, five last Sunday. Very old, happy birthday last Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> the tower was built, just a brief history, in about 1550 by Alexander Hanley, and he subsequently purchased Kerval, which is a property on the other side of Wigton Bay, where my family still live. The site is on a defensive position uh, <coughs> on raised ground. It seems odd, but it's on top of a uh, hill or something. And the reason was that it was all surrounded by marshland. And that's the, the name of Sorby actually means a marsh. And nearby is a wooden mot dating from about 12th, 12th century. <coughs> and um, that was excavated recently. They didn't find a great deal, but it was obviously lived in before this was built in the 16th century, <coughs> a time of considerable local feuding. And the Hannies were here uh, for not all that long, and eventually they lost it to um, other uh, families in the area. And the last inhabitant was a brigadier, brigadier general um, John Stewart, and he died in 1748, uh, after which the tower was abandoned and became a ruin. In the Book of Galloway, which was 1745, I think, there's an interesting description of a visit to the old place of Sorby, as it was called. And it says, where the walls were covered in ivy and the noise of knocking on the great oaken doors studded with nails startled flocks of birds, as it does now, um, <laughs> from their eerie in the bastions. Yeah. The, um, the door was opened by Brigadier John Stewart, who was the last inhabitant of Sorby. By then an old man, he had been a member of the last Scots Parliament and the first MP for Wigginshire in the Westminster Parliament of 1707, which you will all remember is the date of the Union of Scotland. Yeah, when the visitors left, they were accompanied by the brigadier's servant, John Hanny, who had been drinking. He said that he'd been there before his employer, who we did not like, and would be there after him. So this was rather prophetic in terms of a family name, which has now returned to Sorby over 200 years later, when the tower was donated to the Clan Hanny Society in 1965. <coughs> Since then, uh, clan members have worked on uh, pulling, stripping the ivy away, and, uh, but it became dangerous, and in 2001, and again in 2005, we had very substantial grants from Historic Scotland, full scaffolding, repairing the walls, trying to make it safe, and not allowing it to collapse. But further work was needed and was required, 
So in 2015, we founded a Sorby Tower charity. We opened it in with a, an event in the House of Lords in London. My namesake, Lord David Hannah, presided. Uh, we then went to New York in 2017 to Tartan Week, and we got quite a few funds from there. Um, and the, we also had a business plan. And when you have a building like this, there are three options. You either put a, re a fence around it, say keep out and let it fall down. Or you try to conserve it as a ruin, but that costs a lot of money, and how do you pay for it? The answer is you can't, because it doesn't bring in any money. So the third option was to fully restore it, and you're talking about millions, because it would then bring in an income from letting it out. Now, you can understand why in the <coughs> 18th century, uh, people abandoned tower houses, because they're pretty uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> they're cold, they've got stone walls, they've got lots of stairs. Uh, and they built nice farmhouses instead, which is why all the cut stone around the windows has been taken away to build farmhouses uh, in the area. But for a holiday house, it's great. And there is a tower house near here, which is owned by the Landmark Trust, yeah. and that is rented out 45 weeks a year at £1,000 a week. Because people like having a holiday in historic buildings. So that's the aim, but it'll take a long time, but we're gradually getting there. Thanks to Stephen, who's done an amazing job. We have a temporary roof on, which has been there uh, three years. Three and just years. recently, he's added this floor here. So we are having events, and has been having events here, um, because it is now safe to do that. So I'll hand over to you, Steve, to say don't, a bit Don't more. move from there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yes, so welcome, everybody. What an, what an amazing thing to be able to do, share. Okay, we've been having clan gatherings for many, many years, but this is actually our first event, as David says, as a clan in here. And that, that's got to be a big tick in the box for me, yeah. I'll tell you what. That's what I wanted. A few years ago, we came for the gathering on the Saturday, and it was chucking it down with rain. We're normally blessed with quite good weather. Hopefully, it'd be like that this weekend. But 30 of us ended up in the shed, and I was like, this is crazy. We've got a castle here. Why aren't we in our castle? Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. So, uh, you know, you could stand in here and you got as wet in here as you did standing outside. <laughs> and if you remember long, long ago, back through the mists of time, before we had this, it is only a temporary roof structure, but it's doing an amazing job. Before we had this roof structure, the walls were green, the stairs were slippy. We used to buy, I don't know, 30 gallons of, of um, uh, bleach for the stairs alone. It was just hideous. You couldn't do anything with it. You could actually. We did organize a wedding, etc., etc. But it was very, very limited. <coughs> By chance, uh, a chap who I was selling some rope to, I said, I'll just meet me up at the tower and I'll show you in. I didn't know he worked in scaffolding. So he said, uh, Alec, uh, uh, from Stranraw Scaffolding, he said, he came up and he's like, he's having a bag and all that. And we had a coffee and stuff. And he said, oh, he said, you want to put a roof on this? I said, yeah, we're going to have loads of problems with, with some of our friends in Edinburgh. So he said, well, let's see what I can do. So he, he, he drew, a, drew a whole plan. And he phoned me back that night, actually. He said, you really got under my skin in a nice way with your little tour and all that. So I said, oh, great. I said, uh, right, so what have you phoned me for? So he said, uh, well, I've got an idea for your roof. So he came up with this price and, and this plan. And... Uh, we, it was £12,000, I think it was at the time, and uh, he's going he's gonna to maintain it for 10 years. That time is ticking away, of course. Uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, him doing that has meant that we can, it's brought to, you know, the, those ideas, those dreams. People have always said to me, you'll never put a roof on that. You'll never, you probably have said, you'll never stand over here. Well, here I am with a roof over my head, and we're standing over here. There you go. So we have to just, Keep going. We don't, if we stop, we walk away from here and this building will fall apart. So that's why we're here, breathing new life into it. When I say to folk, this isn't a derelict building. This has got so much life. Look at all these bodies in here today. Uh, and um, it's a global thing, isn't it, what we're, what we're part, part and parcel of. And this is at the heart of that, <coughs> of that uh, organization. And it's wonderful that we can welcome everybody back from wherever you are on the planet. 
uh, after COVID um, and we can share this space once again. Yeah, yeah. And the first one to win the lottery. Don't wait for the lottery, okay? Yeah. Just, <laughs> that's, that's, don't wait for the lottery. Yeah, we can. Uh, because we have to, uh, you know, once this floor was done here, we did this for £2,000, can you believe it? Okay, and then we put the shutters in. Because if you sat here, I imagine David sitting here at the top table. And as soon as you sat here, the wind howling through that window or that window is just like, no chance, we've got out some shutters. <laughs> now what we have, if you come in here this morning, it was completely covered in guano. Okay, our, our beautiful uh, birds have thought, oh, words travel fast, let's get in there. It's great, it's dry. Yeah. Yeah, there's less drafts, the shutters. They've got to go. I'm not into shooting things or anything like that. So they've already hatched their chicks and stuff. So very soon, hopefully, we're going to put uh, shutters or screens on these on, on all the upper windows, yeah. and that will keep, keep the, the wildlife out. It will at the same time allow the light in because it, it's a real shame to get rid of the light from the building. Of course, natural light's the best of all. So uh, yeah, so that's what we're planning next. Um, we're also engaged, I don't want to say too much because I'm going to say it again tomorrow, but we're also engaged uh, with John Saunders, uh, who is a conservation architect. And the plan is, uh, is to start the vaulting here, our fireplace, rebuild it, and that will start the staircase up to the next floor. So as soon as we get to one floor, we want to be on the next. You know, we've been spending quite a lot of time actually through COVID, Christy and I, uh, sitting around the fire and you could look from the fire in the kitchen and I do urge you all to go down and have a look down there because it's changed dramatically because it now has a ceiling uh, and you sit down there and you look up through this space and you look out to the stars with your stuff unfortunately we can no longer do that but we have a space to share and use and it's all yours so well, let you. the party begin yeah. enjoy your nibbles and thanks for your support yeah, thank, thank you. you great job Steve I've got a, a big welcome to you all from America, Canada. Interesting, the biggest contingent is from England. Okay, so welcome. Also, something in Scotland. I see my son Neil has just appeared. The trustee of the charity. Good to see you. And so, carry on and keep chatting. Thank you. Cheers, all. Cheers. My name is Rick Hanna from Charleston, West Virginia, here at Silver Tower. Having a wonderful time with all the kinsmen and kins ladies. We wish you were here, but we want to give you a, a wonderful reading that this is a wonderful event and one of these days you should make it and we hope that you can find a way to do that. Cheers and have a wonderful day. She said she didn't want any animals or any child support if was young. Anything. All she wanted was. I'm Frederick Hane, I'm the vice convener and uh, helping with organizing the events. And, uh, and here we have your Blair Johnson from Canada, Vancouver Island. This is my first time here, here with my dad. And so far it's been great. Just meeting well, all the new people. I think it's, it's so great that we have people coming from all over the world coming into this small area and we're all meeting and talking about things, but we all have one thing in common, um, and, it's, and it's here. So folks who are not able to get here, um, I hope you're able to, to see a bit of what we've now achieved. And um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to the years to come where we'll see improvements every time we come. So uh, do, do get, come over here as soon as you're able to, I would recommend it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.